guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kimara and today I'm going to be talking to you about teaching English in Asia. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Are you guys ready? Here we go. Look at my boobies. Hey guys, welcome back and like I said, today I'm going to be talking to you about teaching English in Asia, but more specifically in Taiwan and why I feel people should give Taiwan a chance. It's a great, beautiful place full of rich culture and history and it's an amazing place to start your journey of teaching English as a foreign language. I was about six months out of college and I had just finished my TEFL program and I was eager and ready to just start on my journey. I had applied through a company called Corvia to the EPIC program, Gepic and Schmo, and I had also applied to the TALK program. So just waiting and waiting and waiting and what felt like an eternity, I ended up running into 30 people. 30 people in the Atlanta airport who are from Taiwan and me being me, I struck up a conversation with them and they just convinced me that Taiwan was the most amazing, beautiful place in the world, that the food was great, the people were awesome, and that it was a place that I would enjoy. And so I took all that information, I went home that night, and I started looking for schools in Taiwan. And the school that I ran across was called Hess Education International. And I did my research on this school, and I heard a lot of good things and a lot of bad things, but I'm the type of person I wanted to still make my own opinion of that school and I started my application process which was very easy and simple all they wanted essentially was for me to get a police background check have my four-year diploma and to apply to the school and basically have a positive attitude positive attitude and apply to the school so I did and within the week I had a Skype interview and by the time I was entering into the second week I had a conditional job offer to start in Taiwan as a teacher and I mean I was pumped and I was excited for it and I was ready to go <laughs> and so I was kind of on this do I or do I not because I'm still essentially waiting for an answer from Seoul from Korea and that answer actually did come when I was already in Taiwan unpacking my bags and you know their loss I stayed in Taiwan because I had already committed and it's a decision that I'm glad that I made. Why? What were some worries that I had before moving to Taiwan? Well my first concern was I didn't know where Taiwan was on the map. I'm gonna be honest I actually had to google it. I mean I heard of Taipei but I had no idea where it was and <laughs> so it really shocked me to find out that Taiwan was actually an island because in my mind I was actually placing it by Nepal somewhere. No, it's nowhere, it's nowhere over there you guys. It's, just, it's an island, it's below Japan, okay? It's above the Philippines and to the left and it's below Japan, okay? So now that we all know, Taiwan is called Ila Formosa, the beautiful island and it does not disappoint you guys the name holds true it is so beautiful so spectacular and like those 30 people said to me in the Atlanta airport it is full of culture full of history and full of amazing loving and kind people so yeah just you know thumbs up to Taiwan but besides not knowing where Taiwan actually was I was really concerned with the fact that I couldn't speak Mandarin. I mean, I could speak Japanese, I could speak Korean. The only thing I could say in Mandarin was, xie xie. That was it. That was it. And I didn't want to be one of those people to like, go to a foreign country and I can't say more than one word. Like, how entitled is that? You know? How privileged is that? So even though I had this conditional job offer, I still was you know, originally unsure if I would take it because I was like, oh my goodness, how can I learn Mandarin in like a month? You know, it was, it was really stressful for me and I kind of just hit that YOLO moment. It was like, whatever, I'm going, I'll figure it out when I get there. And I did. <laughs> but actually, to be honest, you know, a lot of people in Taiwan speak English and so they kind of spoil you. They spoil you. They spoil you because clearly I'm a foreigner right 
and um at times you would see them getting frustrated because I was frustrated because I couldn't say what I needed and stuff like that which was so cute it just made me love them even more like I'm sorry I made you mad because I'm mad I'm sorry I just want bread I just want, where's the bread <laughs> you know like I don't know it's cute anyway another reason why I chose my company head was because when applying for Taiwan it's unlike the other countries it's not like Japan and it's not like Seoul South Korea um, with those two countries you have a lot of assistance in getting your things moved and getting settled in and finding apartments and things like that but with Taiwan I was finding that a lot of that help wasn't actually there you know but with Hess it had the best uh, assistance program in setting you up so like with Japan and Korea South Korea you got assistance with your ticket you get a housing stipend and you know things like that but in Taiwan that's not true you had to buy your own ticket over okay and you have to pay for your own apartment now the reason why I chose Hess was because Hess will arrange for your ride from the airport to the hotel that you will stay in your first few you know weeks that you're there Hess will also set you up with a loan so that you can purchase your apartment put a down payment onto your apartment and they'll pull the loan out of your paycheck so that you don't have to physically you know figure it out they don't figure it out for you and um, most importantly I had never taught in front of a class before and Hess will set you up to make sure that you've been trained before you step into a classroom giving you you know hands-on experience and, and also teaching you how the workbook and things like that go that's another plus side to Hess as well they give you the teacher's manual of how the lessons should go how much time you should spend on you know phonics vocabulary reading workbook they set you up with that but they also so they give you the lesson plan essentially is what I'm trying to say but they also give you flashcards and they set you up with basic things like sticky balls regular balls um, flashcards dice big dice seems like you so that you can play games with the kids and of course as you become a better teacher and you become more comfortable you can create games off the top of your head using anything and stuff like that so but those were some of the reasons that I chose Hess it was because in Taiwan they give what I feel is the best assistance to getting yourself set up into the new country well let's get into what is it actually like to teach kids in Asia or in Taiwan um, my first time was extremely extremely nerve-wracking they have such an organized system of what lesson is next and da 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 da, da. and um, my first day the lesson ended up being confused or wrong or something so I had practiced for three days a lesson that wasn't even the lesson and everyone of course apologized 5,000 times they were like oh my gosh you we think you we think you practiced the wrong one and I was like what do you mean you know like and they're like it's not this one it was the next one so I literally had to walk into class and wing it my very first lesson I had to wing it and the kids just kind of looked at me like oh we're gonna eat this one alive little did they know no you're not not over here boom but um so yeah my first my first lesson was unforgettable <laughs> it was so unforgettable I was so my nerves were just like seriously you know you practice all week you get there you just like <sighs> like you know I didn't know what else to do I was so mad but I made it through and to be honest um the Hess lesson planning once you get the hang of it you can literally just read it five minutes before you walk into class and go boom you know but that first time is a doozy you know just being the first one in general but teaching English in Asia or just teaching in general is so rewarding especially when you have a connection with your students and especially when you feel like they really value 
you as a person you know they don't always love the lessons half the time they don't want to be there a lot of them have been at school all day and they're coming to you at four in the afternoon five in the afternoon some of them 6 30 at night or even on Saturdays they're coming to you and like I said they don't want to be there but they just value you as a person it's such an amazing feeling but I also feel like that's a testament to who you are as a person and so teaching to me is rewarding and it's the best feeling in the world I could be exhausted and would just get these hugs and kisses or they would you know we would banter back and forth and it was just so funny it would just lift my spirits in so many ways teaching is hard I'm not gonna lie it's hard and especially when you put a lot into your kids when you value your kids and you value their time it's hard because if they have extracurricular activities like something like a lot of my high school kids had English competitions they would come to you I need to come to class early can you help me with my speech for speech class in their regular school well that may be your off time but if you value your kids and you value their time you do it you know what I mean and then in my personal in my school we always had English competitions um, my goodness anything that evolved around English so it could be dance competitions with English songs or um, storytelling there, there were so many things that was like more of your time that you had to invest into your your kids but um teaching teaching is hard teaching is hard especially when you feel like the lesson's not getting across you know you work so hard on a lesson and in your mind you think that you're delivering it okay but then you're you're not you know what I mean and you can see that the wheels are trying to spin but they're like uh, uh, and they're all looking at each other and then you're sitting there like uh, you know what I mean and that's probably the hardest part is trying to make the lessons click but these children are so smart and intuitive that I don't want anyone to stress out like oh I won't be able to do it trust me if I'm able to do it you're able to do it <laughs> honestly and truly I'm able to do it you're able to do it but that's another great thing too about working for Hess is that you will have a CT at Hess you are called an NST which is a native speaking teacher and then you have a CT which is a Chinese teacher essentially and um, if you really and truly cannot get something across to your kids your CT will be there to help explain and vice versa if your CT feels like they cannot explain something to the children they will ask you and then you can explain it to the children but like I said all in all these children are brilliant they are so smart they study so hard they work so hard and if you are putting in the effort to teach them they are going to go home study work on it and they are going to learn so don't stress too much about any of that teaching of course you know I don't really think there's really many bad things about teaching being a teacher in Asia to be honest there's nothing I can think of right now if I think of something I'll see it in another video but to be honest, I just think there's so many good things about teaching. Um, the hugs, the kisses, oh my goodness, when you teach the young kids, you're going to get a mouthful of snot all the time. Just, teacher, I love you! I love you, teacher! You're just like, oh my god, I love you too! Stop with the snot kisses, but you get used to it. Oh, is that so sad? You get used to it. The snacks, my kids are always bringing me snacks. Um, candy. Even the older kids, hugs. Even my high school kids. Oh my goodness. I'm obsessed or was obsessed with Pokemon Go and I'm obsessed with Eevee and I would literally stop class. Okay, shh, don't tell nobody this. I would stop class because I'd get the little ding, you know, that there was a Pokemon around and I would go catch the Pokemon and my kids would just think it was hilarious. So my high school kids ended up buying me like the Eevee and all the Eevee evolutions because I'm obsessed like I, I love Eevee I love Jigglypuff I love Clefairy so <laughs> and I think that's a real true testament that you are doing a great job as a teacher when your 13 and 14 and 15 year olds love you because you know that says a lot 
<laughs> that says a lot because that's when that's the age when they hate everybody and if they love you you're definitely doing something right um, my thing is as a teacher I always stick to the lesson plan I try to but I try to make it as fun as possible and especially with my high school kids I'm like let's just get this out the way and then let's talk about whatever so with my high school kids you know with my school too when you get to the honors the I the I or IA or whatever um, you know it has to be done the workbook and stuff but essentially for me I would just talk to the kids talk to them what's going on in the news what's going on in TV what movie have you seen and let's talk about it in English who has a boyfriend who has a girlfriend who broke up this week and that's literally all we would do I mean the work would get done in like the first 30 minutes of class but in the, you know the last half of the class oh we're gossiping we are gossiping because teacher wants to know the scoop honey I want to know what's going on tell me she broke up with you again like <laughs> I had to get I had to get my tea somehow and my high school kids that was that was how I was doing it is that trifling oh my gosh but I love them I love them so I really just don't think there's any bad part of teaching you know um Asia's intense I will say that you're gonna work if you're not used to working get you you're gonna get used to it real quick because they're gonna whip you into shape my work schedule oh my goodness used to be from essentially I would teach from 9 to 8 30 but you got to think about I have to get to school and then I have to grade at the end of the day and there were like little breaks here and there but at one point I had a break from maybe 11 30 until about like 12 45 or something like that it was weird but and I would just go the rest of the day until 8 30 and then I'd have to grade all those workbooks from other classes so but you get used to it and you you start to feel like I'm invincible you know and stuff like that and I will say though in Asia you will work sometimes Monday through Saturday sometimes Monday through to Sunday I mean if there is field trips and stuff like that so it's very rare it does happen and it's just more time with the kids and you get to see them outside of the classroom and it's it's a neat it's a cool interaction you know they get to see you just I don't know be yourself and stuff like that hiking I fell on a field trip once that was my kids loved that. <laughs> teacher, are you okay? Are you okay, teacher? I'm like, not really, I'm embarrassed. You know, stop looking at me. <laughs> but it's fun. It's cool. So, I don't, like I said, I don't feel like there's many bad things. There's a lot of positive to teaching. And I just really want people to consider Taiwan. Um, if I have to offer any type of advice for anywhere in the world, I guess, but specifically in Taiwan, is build your relationships build your relationships build your trust build your friendships with your CTs with people in your branch with people in your school because that is how you will get things done and that is how life will be easier for you um, I was able to do a lot of great things in my school because of the relationships I built with my my students but also with my CTs you know if you don't like how certain things are running you can voice that to your CT you can voice that or in my case you can voice that to your manager um, but yeah build your relationships honest and genuine relationships um, they go a long way they go a long way in in Taiwan you know being a good genuine friend being a hard worker it, it does go a long way don't and build bridges don't burn them that's definitely the best piece of advice I have to offer um, for it, it does play into teaching because if people trust you and they know that you're reliable then they don't have such the watchful eye on you mmm you know what I mean they don't have they're not like you know with the whip all the time they kind of just falling back and stuff so <clears throat> all right guys I think I'm gonna end this video here I will make more videos about Taiwan about specifically teaching at Hess so if you like this video and you want to see more videos like this one please like this video subscribe to my channel leave some comments below if you have questions hey let me know I'd love to answer them for you you guys can follow me on Instagram at not my gumdrop buttons or snapchat miss moon 04 all right guys 
tortilla. So I thought I'd show you guys some of my goodies that I got from my high school kids. They cute. They just love me so much, you guys. Eevees. And I'm not saying be a teacher so you guys can get gifts, but they're just so cute. Like, how much love is that? How much love is that? It's the Sailor Venus pin. I still haven't opened it because it's so special. Like, I just don't want to use it, you know? So, these are my high school kids. Yuri, William, Danny, Sunny, Fifi. Oh my god, Iris. Oh my gosh, you guys, they're the best students ever. I love them so much. They're just so sweet to me, so good to me. Naughty sometimes, but I love them. So, thank you guys. <laughs>